Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. It is late in the evening on the 18th of May. And this is Christopher Aaron. We will be looking at the action in gold and silver, especially as the markets got a little bit spooked today by something the Fed said. We will look at that, put that into historic context. Before we look at the charts, I want to say thank you very much to one of the supporters of this channel. I've been very appreciative of his support all along and he sent me this gift of a beautiful 2016 silver eagle to mark the beginning of this round of the bull market that we are all participating in together so i really appreciate that fruit fast thank you very much for sending that to me it's really nice i will keep this one very safe to commemorate the time period that we are living through. So we will now switch over to the charts and look at what is happening in the markets today. So as I said, guys, the action today was quite a spook in gold and silver by the Fed. We are going to look at that even more so in the mining sector. And I wanted to let you know that we are not going to be looking very much at the mining sector today. Um, I did write a new article that anyone who is interested in putting into context where we are in the bull market after such a strong gain that we've seen, but what the potential might be for the next several years, I'm going to put a link to that below um, so that I don't cover that again but that will be below in a link. And we're going to look at the metals primarily. So the big thing today was the Fed came out with some of the minutes from the last meeting, and they were basically discussing the increased likelihood for a rate hike in the short-term interest rates coming up in the, at the next meeting in June. So as we all know, the Fed is in control of the short-term interest rate policy in the United States, and this has an impact on some of the longer-term rates to some extent, and it does affect the markets in certain ways. So here we are looking at simply the one-day action in gold, the U.S. stock market, and the U.S. dollar. And of course, the minutes came out, can you guess, right here at 2 o'clock. So we can see the nosedive that gold took, the stock market basically coming down off of its highs and finishing fairly flat for the day, the US dollar surging. So we basically saw an inverse relationship today between gold and the dollar. And this happens very much in the short run. Of course, I've made the point in the long run, the dollar has very little impact on gold. The dollar currently near the 95 level on the USDX index, where it was approximately 25 years ago when gold was only a fraction of the price that it is today. So over the long run, very little impact. Short run, however, we can see this impact very clearly. So what happened today? Basically, they came out and said, okay, we are going to get ready to raise interest rates again for the second time this year in June, or the likelihood anyway, is that that will happen. And the dollar rose and gold got spooked. So let's look at something here. Let's backtrack for people who are not following this quite so closely. We were looking at gold going back um, over the last couple of years. And let's remember that the Fed has had interest rates at 0% for the better part of the last decade. And the very first interest rate hike that happened in, in the Fed short-term interest rate occurred when? Right here on December 16th, December of last year. Notice this marked the exact low in the price of gold, almost to the day. From that first Fed rate hike, gold bottomed spent another several weeks bottoming before beginning the strong rise that we saw in the beginning part of 2016 that is still continuing despite the weakness that we saw today. So the first Fed rate hike caused 
the price of gold to basically bottom and start rising. So why is the thought of a new Fed rate hike causing gold to fall in the short run? This is a very interesting question. We are going to look at a few sample time periods of Fed rate hikes. For example, we are looking here 2003 through 2007. We looked at this about six months ago when the Fed raised interest rates from 1% to 5.25%. And what did gold do? Well, over that exact same time period, gold rose from 325 an ounce to over 800 an ounce. So here we have a time period where the Fed was increasing its interest rates and gold was rising. Let's look at another period here, an even longer period from 1955 post-World War II all the way through 1980 as the Fed increased its interest rates from basically in the vicinity of where they are today, right above 0%, all the way to 19%. Unfathomable today. Unfathomable. It would crush the economy. But that's what they did to save the dollar, quote unquote, throughout this generation. What happened to gold? Did the price of gold crash during this time period? Absolutely not. So we can see that over both short time periods, multi-year time periods, and multi-decade time periods, when the Fed is raising interest rates, gold typically rises. So what is this, what is this myth that is often discussed in mainstream financial press that says if the Fed is going to raise interest rates, it's going to be bad for the dollar? Uh, excuse me, it's going to be bad for gold. What is this myth? The truth is, I don't know. It really is a myth. We've looked at examples right here to show the exact opposite, yet we see days like today where in reaction to the possibility of the Fed raising interest rates, the possibility in June, gold takes a nosedive here. So it's almost as if it's an um, ingrained reaction in traders. It's almost as if well, traders have learned from one another that if the Fed raises interest rates, it's supposed to be bad for gold, as the myth says, and so they just sell gold, even though we see through the actual real-world data that this is not true. So this is sort of a knee-jerk reaction here. Notice when this occurred as well, after the close of the COMEX. Most of the trading in the world happens on the New York COMEX exchange, labeled here NYMEX, as well as a significant amount in the London exchange. So this closed here at 1.30, and we saw the bulk of this decline after the close, what they called the New York Globex, which is basically an electronic-only market. It's called the access market. So it's more thinly traded, so when you have individual players who see a piece of news at this time and they panic for whatever myth it is that they believe and they just decide to dump a bunch of contracts in the thin market, that's what you see. They can take the price of a worldwide historic monetary asset down $20 over the course of an hour or two in this Globex market. Looking at how this impacted silver, kind of the same thing. Again, after the bulk of the trading had occurred for the day, boom, down 30 cents or so. Taking us right into the vicinity of the strong support that we are looking at on the medium term charts, we will look at that going forward. So what does this mean for gold and for silver? Should we panic? Is this the end? The Fed's going to raise interest rates. We see that that is actually going to be good for gold when we look at all the available historic valuation data, yet here the market is panicking. So let's look at our one-year chart now of gold, spot gold as priced in U.S. dollars. What we are seeing here is the continuation of something 
that both bulls and bears may not be very happy about. And this is basically just a gentle grinding uptrend that we are in right now. So notice, since February, since this spike high in February, 1265, I believe, was the high right in the first week of February, we have come back down, made a nominal new high by $20, came back down, made a nominal new high by another $20, and have come back down. It is, this is a very slow two steps up, one and a half steps back, two steps up, one and a half steps back type of action that we are seeing right now. So it's very confounding for the people who are saying gold is going to skyrocket to $2,000 an ounce this year. We are not seeing that type of action. It's also very confounding for the people saying gold is going to crash this year. We are not seeing that type of action either. There is this third possibility, which is a continuous slow rise. This is what I'm seeing. And it looks to me, what we are seeing here, the strength of the resistance at 1305, this important level, which corresponded with the January high, 1305, it looks to me like based on the strength of that resistance, it's been now almost three weeks since that high was hit. Based on the strength of the selling that we're seeing there, yet at the same time, the confluence of support that we have here between 1190 and then all the buying that happened throughout February, March, and April between this 1200 and 1265 region, it looks as though this is going to be what we should expect going forward at each one of the next resistance levels that are going to be coming up. We are going to have people who bought gold in this region sell their gold here and cause these reactions where it comes back down into the level of the support. So that's what we're seeing right now. So where is the support for gold? It's somewhere along this rising uptrend line, somewhere around 1240 right now. If 1240 were to fail, I would be looking for it to come back down into the low 1200s perhaps with the uptrend starting from the absolute low, this blue line that you can see right here, perhaps down to 1220 or so. It looks to me like 1240 will most likely hold. We'll see about that within the next day or two. So if 1240 holds and we continue to bounce around this teal colored slow uptrend and make another attempt at 1305, some point in the early part of the summer, perhaps come back down again and finally break through it, maybe during the seasonable strong period for gold, which starts at the end of August, which is the beginning of the Indian wedding season for gold, when that strong demand starts coming into the market. So in other words, it may be from February 1265, six months later, that it finally breaks $40 higher really a very slow move. As we're seeing though, certain mining companies can move significantly higher even as the price of gold has not moved hardly 20 or $30 from that February high. So this is very good to see the stable action for the mining sector. Let's zoom this out then. And if you believe what we are seeing here, which is this first resistance level here we're looking at gold over the last three years from mid-2013, the last part of the downtrend that we were looking at. Mid-2013, you had this up, down, up, come back down about halfway, hit the up side, down, up, down. This was broken right here in February, of course, and we're seeing this kind of grinding attempt to move higher. So my thesis at this point is that Based on the level, the strength of the resistance that we are seeing here in gold at 1305, I believe we are going to see similar type of resistance emerge at each of the subsequent levels higher that gold will need to break through that represented these important highs over the last few years, shown here in the red circles. 
So in other words, when gold breaks 1305, the next resistance level comes right here, right around 1345. I would expect to see another challenge as we've seen here and perhaps come back down and then retest the 1305 level, et cetera, et cetera. So this will probably form something like a, a trend channel that we will eventually be able to identify. We're seeing that on the short run. I have a feeling that's going to continue for some time. So it may end up taking the better part of another year, year and a half to regain the low 1400s, at which point I believe the gold market will start to accelerate faster. Now, the thing is, this can be frustrating if you are looking for one of those skyrocket type moves that certain people who are more focused on maybe fear tactics are trying to sell. However, if you're really paying attention to what the market is showing you here, you should be very happy to see this kind of back and forth slight uptrend action. Very happy. Because this tells you the market is only in the initial stages of a bull market. A market that's going to skyrocket higher immediately is basically going to make a peak and then come back down almost two-thirds of the way. These skyrocket moves tend to be not sustainable. So this type of action is telling us especially if this continues for the rest of this year and into next year, it's telling us that we are still in the early stages of the move that started with this bottom here in late 2015, early 2016, the early stages. So that's a very good thing, even though it perhaps is not as exciting as um, it could be in some of our fantasy projections for the short run. When we look at silver over the one year time frame, basically we we're seeing what I was seeing last week was the high volume support that we had from the breakout of the inverse head and shoulders pattern. This is a technical pattern. The high volume support that we had came at the breakout here, right around 1620, 1625, before we saw this spike all the way to 1775. It was about a dollar and 50 cent higher spike within three days on record high volume in silver. So we are coming back down into this bar, this white candlestick right here with this high volume. So somewhere in this range of 1680 all the way down to 1620 looks the most likely scenario for where silver will find its support on this weakness that we were seeing. Zooming this out back again to the three year time frame. So we are still having this target here that I have not seen hit yet. Up around 1850, 1875. This will be hit eventually. As I said the last time, really this day-to-day -day action now is becoming less meaningful. So we talked a few videos ago about the possibility of a massive inverse head and shoulders pattern setting up. And some of the people that are more into the technical analysis who are watching this were commenting on that. And I appreciated those comments. And for example, is this right shoulder, is this setting up currently is that the weakness that we were seeing and this is going to come back down into that low 16 support region and then round out through the summer and finally hit this target and then get ready to break out this fall yes absolutely that would have been a little bit weaker than i would have hoped for the move out of the bottoming head and shoulders pattern that we can see here but that's a very valid that's a very valid trajectory that this could be taking right now. Or is this a bull flag that is about to break and hit this target first before the shoulder forms? That is another possibility. These, these short-term targets are really less meaningful for me personally, unless I'm looking to do a very short-term trade based on some of the ratios that I'm seeing 
for example, between silver and some of the silver mining equities, if I think there's going to be a quick move for a day or so higher or lower in silver, sometimes I will do one of those short term trades. But really, as far as gauging from an investment standpoint, if you're either investing in the mining sector or if you're accumulating silver in and around these lows, whether or not this right shoulder is forming right now or whether it's getting ready to move higher and then form the shoulder below 1850, it's not going to make a whole lot of a difference when you're looking back at this two, three, five years from now. I was going to do an executive summary, but instead I'm just going to plop down these long-term charts to remind everyone what we are talking about. We often look at this short run and we can get very caught up in the day to day, which is good. It's interesting, but we have to not lose sight of the long run here. Gold had consolidated for 29 years, broke higher for two years came back down right to the upper level of our expected final low retest zone. We were talking about this about six months ago. Hit that, bounced, broke out of the final part of the downtrend, and we are looking at this forming a cup pattern over the course of several years, after which the next rise will begin. While well, the rise is already beginning, the next challenge of the all-time high will begin within the next few years. That's what the action that we are looking at now is setting up for. Plopping down our long-term silver chart here so we don't lose focus of that. Silver still below its 1980 peak, $49, $50 in that vicinity. Seeing the regular price spikes coming every two to three years, this coming price spike is going to be a longer interval. This is almost following a Fibonacci interval of these spikes here. It looks like silver will be rounding out of this bottom at exactly the rising linear trend going all the way from 2003, rounding out of this. And when it begins to accelerate within the next couple of years significantly, it will be making that next attempt at 50. Of course, silver, relatively speaking, is somewhere down here on gold, somewhere in the six or 700 region on gold. In other words, still way below its 1980 all time high, as we can see here, the all time high there. Whereas gold, we're talking about it has broken its all time high, it has come back, retested that, and is now moving higher. Silver lagging by roughly seven to 10 years when we look at this relative comparison to gold. So it's very exciting to pay attention to the short run. It's very exciting to see the daily gains and then to see these massive downswings that happen also. But let's not lose sight of the big picture, what we were talking about here as we navigate this thing together. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you, FruitFast, for the wonderful gift. And I will see you a week from Wednesday, I'm hoping. There's a possibility that I may have to be upgrading my hardware system on Wednesday. So there may not be a video on Wednesday. It may have to wait until Thursday or Friday. But I'll post an update on the channel if that is going to be delayed. Thank you again. Have a nice evening.